Developing Washington, Congress is back to work for a so-called lame duck session. That's when lawmakers meet following an election, but before the new Congress takes over. And when there is a shift in power like this year in the House, it is time for the current party to push through some of its urgent legislative agendas before the other party takes over. Yeah, live in Washington now with more on this lame duck. From our nation's capital is White House correspondent John Decker. Good afternoon, John. Hey there, Mark. Hi, Sally. Hey, President Biden met with congressional leaders today. Let's talk about their priorities during the session. What, what should we expect? Well, the first priority is making certain that this potentially devastating rail strike does not happen. And both parties are on board with that. There's some bipartisanship uh, as it relates to that. In fact, we saw that in the House of Representatives today. They passed legislation uh, that would impose that tentative contract agreement on all parties involved. That legislation now goes to the Senate. Uh, they will take up that legislation likely within the next 48 hours. President Biden has said he wants that legislation on his desk by Saturday of this week. Reason being is to avert what could be a devastating uh, shutdown to our economy, the supply chain to our economy. Uh, it could impact our economy to the tune of billions of dollars over the course of just the first week. Uh, and so that's the first order of business. We saw the other order of business in this lame duck session yesterday, uh, Mark and Sally, and that was passage of that legislation dealing with same-sex marriage. That uh, likely could not get passed in the new Congress, but uh, the numbers were there in the lame duck Congress to pass the Senate, now goes to the House, it will pass the House, and it will get to President Biden's desk for a signature by the end of this year. John, why did Congress feel this legislation was necessary? Well, they felt it was necessary after they saw the Supreme Court overturn Roe versus Wade in late June of this year. They felt that based upon an opinion that was written by Justice Clarence Thomas, this particular uh, right as they view it, uh, members who agreed with this legislation could be taken away. And they felt it was important to enshrine the right to same-sex marriage into federal law. And what you saw is 12 Senate Republicans supporting this legislation more than enough uh, to move this bill uh, out of the Senate, and now it's in the House of Representatives. The House has already passed similar legislation already, not the same exact le legislation, but similar legislation, and that passed with 50 House Republican votes. So it's almost certain to pass the House, and it will get to President Biden's desk for a signature. Well, as you know, two leaders of that far-right group, the Oath Keepers, were found guilty this week of seditious conspiracy. This goes back to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. John, why is this verdict important for the Justice Department? It is considered a win for them. It is considered a win. This is the most serious charge that has been brought thus far by the Department of Justice against any individuals that were conspiring or taking place on the attack on the Capitol on January 6th of 2021. What this does now is it emboldens the Department of Justice to perhaps pursue this specific charge against other potential defendants in the months to come. And this is a serious charge. It actually, this particular aspect uh, of the federal statute uh, actually goes all the way back to the Civil War era and it carries a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. And so those two leaders of the Oath Keepers are facing that maximum penalty when sentencing is handed down by a federal judge, likely in the next few months. House Democrats voted for a new leader today. Congressman Hakeem Jeffries will become the first black American to head a major political party in Congress. What can you tell us about him? Well, he is, uh, he's had a meteoric rise uh, in terms of his time in the U.S. Congress. This is his fifth term in the House of Representatives. He's slowly risen up the leadership ranks, and he was seen as the heir apparent to Nancy Pelosi when she finally announced that she is stepping aside. He served as an impeachment manager, you may recall, in the first impeachment of former President Trump, but he is viewed as a centrist, not from the far left of the Democratic Party, someone who wants to and pledges to work with Republicans in the House on legislation uh, that is seen as bipartisan. And so uh, he will take over the duties of being the leader for the House Democratic Caucus in early January uh, when the new Congress actually takes, sh takes shape and takes form.
Yeah, and the Democrats will be in the minority in the House by that point. John Decker, thank you so much for your time with us this afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate it.